Ne pune, līgā lojā plauksa, tā tā apotā lēsmatā mās, stāvā nākurā tur nesuros, jā, ne tīm īsumi, tīm īdenīmi, tu andāvī samarāki. Tā ērga tu samarāki, īkām politinos tās ar mēnā, apotīs tīkīti tesmu, mērā stīna lāda, stīna fīnā. O tā vi proti da skala no sti ne ovini ti klausa proti ne na via vaso to kitino fatos e me tato lafos ola afta i note na to ilian ye cosa a dominde casa la liga smines e tato to cavos ti fundas den fadozo den fadozo mona tolta o ti cora ti cria leni samaraki pa itani tonis i tonis samas in filo A popse, eko me via rasi, in parusia simas, se dio meri, prota, tas asmi lisi, ki via šaron stoka, i sin via fibriamu, stis parusia sanska testo, nano, eko me no. I ki via stoka, ta peri grapsi, stangli ta, in ane kalipsi, ka ane skati, tu tapu, tu gripa, polemisti. O pos egine, to dio kiliadis tā kā tēmēkā, dio kiliadis tā kā eksi. Vēturo, ar gotas asmi līsto, stāvīni kā, ar stāvīni kā, jā, tu dio neus tolu tu stāpos, tu vrati kā tikeos, polikon dās un tāpo tu gripa polemisti, to dio kiliadis tā kā to. Ir jau stopa. Kyrias ti kyrie halisera, ime tini mu nabis hume edo apopse, sa zito signome puta maniso sa anglika, povane poste milo kala elenika, ke apto pakane polidisvoli tim parusiasi jaons amas. I'm going to tell you tonight the story of the excavation of the Griffin Warrior. I'm going to try to make it short. Um, it was one of the most exciting finds uh, of, of the decade, and we're honored that we were able to excavate it um, on behalf of, of the Greek state. So we're talking about the Palace of Nestor, which I'm sure you've all visited, or if you haven't, you will after my presentation. I show you here a reconstruction with Carl Blagan and Marion Rawson, who excavated it. They were both from the University of Cincinnati, and that's where Jack and I are from. In 2015, we began new excavations on behalf of the university. And I show you here the area in which we started to work and the area that Jack will talk about. Uh, there's a tiny white dot that my lovely assistant could point to. That is um, the tomb of the Griffin Warrior and what you see the large dome is the um, Tholos tomb that was excavated by Blagan. Here we are on the first day of excavation. There were four stones visible on the surface of the earth. We decided that we would put a trench there. And at the end of the first week, we had the outline of what was known, what is now known as the grave of the Griffin Warrior. At that time though, we had absolutely no archeological finds. So we assumed that it was something perhaps modern or something that had been rooted in antiquity. One of the first things that we uncovered was a large stone, which turned out to be one of the cover slabs of the grave. And I showed you the excavation at 10 days. After, by the end of the second week, however, we began to find the archeological material. And you can see here some of the things that first came to light, including a bronze mirror, which is in the center of the slide, and a large bronze basin. This is what the mirror looks like after partial conservation. 
with a close-up of the beautiful ivory handle. One of the second things that we found was the end of a gold necklace, which we desperately wanted to remove. We found this uh, in the third week of excavation, and we were not able to remove it until five months later. Here also, you can see the first gold cup that is peeking out from beneath some of the finds. We removed the top layer of artifacts and revealed the base of the large bronze basin, uh, which was full of boar's tusks, tusks from wild boars, and um, uh, uh, bronze axe of the Minoan type. The boar's tusk was used to make helmets, and here is a reconstruction of a helmet, um, a representation on a wall painting from the Palace of Nestor, and then a suit of armor, which was also found in the grave of the Griffin warrior. The reconstruction is from a, a chamber tomb in Bendra. Our suit of armor is in approximately 10,000 pieces. Something else that we found fairly soon after the beginning of the excavation was a beautiful ivory comb, which I showed you before cleaning and after cleaning. In total, there were six ivory combs that were buried with this warrior. After removing the bronze basin, we began to find the precious artifacts. In this slide, you can see uh, uh, the first of two of the four gold rings that were mentioned, as well as numerous seal stones that are made of agate, carnelian, glass, and gold. Here are the four rings that we found. And I should say, we found the rings um, in August. And for three weeks, every day, Jack had been saying to me, will you find a gold ring today? And I would say, no, Jack, there are no gold rings here today. Uh, and then there were, there were four of them. So we have a scene, all of them are very Minoan in character. Uh, we have a bull leaping scene, which is known from Crete very well. And the other three rings show goddesses, Minoan goddesses. Uh, the largest of the rings um, displays a scene of worshiping and it's in the corner. Uh, um, it shows, uh, let me see if I can go on to the next slide. Uh, it shows three women who are dancing and have scarves curling out behind them, and they're in front of a shrine, and there are two women who are approaching who have their hands to their mouths who are singing. So this gold ring is extraordinary, and it's the second largest gold ring that has ever been found in Greece. But one of the most amazing things that we uncovered in this raid, something that has never been, uh, the likes of which have never been found before, is an agate seal stone that is this big, this big, very small, two, three centimeters, and it shows a combat scene. There are, uh, one warrior has been slain, who's on the ground, and two men are locked in mortal combat. Because the stone is agate, it's difficult to see, but I show you here a drawing so that you can better understand it. And this was made by our artist, who is very nearsighted. So she was able to see all of the detail. But lest you think that I am joking or that she got it wrong, I want to show you two close-ups. Here is a close-up of the warrior who has a sword that is about to be plunged into his neck. And the, the, um, the victor is gripping his helmet, which is probably made of bronze and boar bristle. And this is then a close-up of the warrior who has fallen onto the ground, who has already been killed. And if you notice the sword in the foreground, something very exciting is that we found a similar sword 
next to the Griffin Warrior. And here you can see it right before it's removed from the ground. It has a gold hilt and it's a long bronze sword. This is a detail of the gold hilt and it's made in a rare technique called gold embroidery. So you can see where the little staples as they are have broken apart on the hilt. I mentioned to you then, of course, the gold necklace that we found early in the excavation. Here's what it looks like after removal from the ground with two wonderful agate beads and a glass bead in the center, which has lost its color. So all told, this is what the final layer of artifacts look like and I have color coded the finds so that you can see the, the bronze in the green, the, the, the purple is silver, uh, the um, yellow is gold, and of course the red are all of the seal stones that were found in the grave. So we managed to remove all of the artifacts by October, and the final thing that we needed to remove was the, um, was the body of the Griffin warrior himself. Uh, and here I show you uh, the skull, his skull right before we remove it. Thank you very much. Ikiaka 
ευρήματα και μεγνώμονα αυτό τον στόχο, καθαρίστηκε η βλάσταση από το χωράφι που ήταν σπαρμένο με κορυφιακή στα σταφίδα, ώστε να μπορέσουμε να δούμε την επιφάνεια της γης. Κατόπιν αυτό, αυτού, αμέσως παρατηρήσαμε ότι οι πύρκαν 